This time on Monkey Life. Alison heads to the Maldives to rescue a slow loris confiscated during a drugs raid. I'm not sure. This might be a lady. <laughs> but he puts up a fight when Alison tries to move him. You undo his hands from the other side. And Jeremy is outwitted by Capuchin Joanne when he tries to take her to the hospital. You know this game, don't you? Monkey World in Dorset, set deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. For more than 25 years, the team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, has rescued and rehabilitated abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. We'll take good care of his monkeys. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes. Its aim is to give them a safe and happy life in as natural an environment as possible. Monkey World has an eclectic mix of primates. There are now 21 different species here, ranging from chimpanzees and orangutans to stump-tailed macaques and cotton-top tamarinds. If a primate is in trouble, the park does its best to help. Today, Alison has a long journey ahead of her. She's flying off to the Maldives to rescue yet another different species of primate, a Bengal slow loris which has been confiscated by the authorities during a drugs raid. The nocturnal loris originates from Southeast Asia. Loris are protected under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES, which the Maldives has recently signed up to. Unfortunately, the authorities don't know where the loris has come from, so can't release it back into the wild. Alison is keen to encourage the Maldives to continue to enforce CITES, so even though the park has no nocturnal facilities, she's agreed to look after the loris while it's quarantined. Here I am at Gatwick Airport to go collect the Bengal loris and bring it back to Britain because the governments around the world that enforce the treaties that protect endangered species need assistance. If they're going to enforce the laws, they need somewhere for these confiscated animals to go to. And Monkey World's going to be the home for the next four months for this slow loris. Alison is flying more than 5,000 miles to reach the Maldives, which lie in the Indian Ocean. The archipelago is made up of more than 1,000 islands. As soon as she arrives, it's straight down to business. Armed with a travelling crate to take the loris back to the UK, she heads off to the capital, Male, to meet with the environment minister. Alison's been asked to appear at a press conference and has agreed, seeing it as a good opportunity to promote CITES within the Maldivian community. Although Monkey World can't look after the loris long term, her plan is to pair it with a loris at another British wildlife centre. Monkey World is able to help, so I have offered, in the spirit of enforcing CITES, to come here and take the loris back to England, and then eventually it will be paired with another one of its own kind. We believe this to be a male loris, and we have a home for it in England with a female loris, so he will have a wife. With her formal duties over and paperwork complete, Alison heads to Doonidoo, or Prison Island as it's better known, to finally meet the loris. Thank you. She has no idea what state the little primate will be in. Although they've tried their best, the authorities admit they don't know how to care for it and have mistakenly been giving it fruit and milk. Hello, my friend. You good wee man? Alison is relieved to see the loris is alive but it's lost condition living in a birdcage. Hi, you. You're a good boy. It is very unnatural just for him to get milk and bananas, but he has survived OK. The police have called him Buddy, presuming he's male. But on closer inspection, Alison has her doubts. 
I'm not sure. This might be a lady. <laughs> This is common problem with this species and also with gibbon species. The ladies' parts look very much like a man's. I am not 100%. We will confirm at Monkey World, but I am happy that for now it is a boy. Yeah. And we will check. Yeah, that's why it's Buddy, the name. <laughs> if it is a lady, you can call Lady Buddy, okay? <laughs> so Lady Buddy he may turn out to be. Alison is just happy to see that they've done a great job enforcing the law and caring for him, or her. Keeping a confiscated loris so well here in the Maldives um, when they really didn't know anything about them, so job well done here. The next challenge is to get Buddy back to the UK. Back in Dorset, it's business as usual. And today, the team has called in the services of wildlife vet John Lewis to take a look at one of the capuchins. Joanne has developed a persistent limp, which it's thought was triggered by a fall she had last summer. Immediately after the fall, she wasn't able to use her left leg. Over the next few months, the lameness yeah, came and went, got worse, got better on just medical treatment, but it's never gone away. So we're going to x-ray that whole leg in case she did do something that we can help her with. But to take her to the hospital, they're going to have to sedate her. And that isn't as easy as it sounds. First, someone will need to catch her in a net. And that task has fallen to animal manager Jeremy Keeling. She looks vicious, Jeremy. John has known Jeremy for years and delights in winding him up. I can get through there otherwise. He decides his only chance of success is to go in with her. I'm going through, so shut the bottom. I'm worried about you. But unfortunately, the slide is meant for capuchins and isn't big enough for Jeremy. Come on, Jeremy, today would be good. <laughs> oh, he's going to swing in legs first. Radical. Like all capuchins, Joanne is very bright and is not going to make this easy for Jeremy. Are you all right, Jeremy? He shut the door. Well done, she's behind you. Joanne is just too smart. Finally, Jeremy manages to get into the same room as the little monkey, and battle commences. You know this game, don't you? She has no intention of being caught. But as she dives into a corner, John spots an opportunity to sedate her. She's cornered. Ready? She's had it. Oh, well done. It's done. Now the pressure is on Jeremy to catch her before she passes out and falls. Good. His perseverance finally pays off, and the team wastes no time in getting her into surgery. Once he's happy that she's stable, John turns his attention to Joanne's bad leg. Wow, she lost a lot of muscle off the left leg. There's every chance that's a dislocated leg. And you see, they're not the same length. John decides to do some x-rays to confirm his suspicions. Wow. Well, the hips are very different. One as far forward as you can get it, one as far back. The right hip looks normal. The left hip looks degenerated. It looks as though Joanne's bones have grown around the hip joint to try to compensate for the displacement. If you have a partly dislocated joint, there's more instability in the joint. Instead of being a, a, a ball in a tight socket, let's say it's a ball in a loose socket, there's often bony proliferation around the edges of that joint to try and stabilise it. It's a, it's a way of the body trying to stabilise the joint. And it looks as if you've got a lot of bony reaction here. 
That looks like a very old injury, probably before it arrives at Monkey World. Now, whether it's worth trying to operate is another matter, and it probably isn't. So they're going to leave Joanne's leg as it is. But while she's asleep, they take the opportunity to treat her injured foot. Capuchins often get wounds because they have sharp teeth. John also yep. notices something else he can help with. The upper left canine here has been broken for some time. There's an exposure of the root canal that allows infection to travel up the tooth, and sometimes they end up with sinuses breaking out on the face as a result. So we're just going to remove it. Oh, that's come. And we got it. An interesting thing about that root, it has a very rounded end to it, and not a sharp, pointy end. That's because infection is up there. So that in alone is justification for removing it. So they may not have helped Joanne with her limp, but it's been a worthwhile trip to the hospital. Well, that's it, really. Life's tough as a capuchin, I suppose. <laughs> Coming up, relief for Alison when Buddy is finally unloaded from the plane. He was moving around, checking it out. He has the fresh air on his face. He looks fantastic. And funny man Shamak keeps baby Thelma entertained. Alison is in the Maldives, where preparations are underway to transport the slow Loris back to the UK. It's been a huge international effort to rescue him. Quite frankly, this loris doesn't even belong at Monkey World because we don't have slow loris. But what I've agreed to do is organize everything for the transport of the loris, get it back to the park where it will have to do four months quarantine for rabies. And then after we quarantine it at Monkey World, I've arranged for it to find a mate and a home at a neighboring wildlife park in Devon called Sheldon. So it's really had quite a journey and there's still a ways to go. Although Monkey World doesn't usually look after Loris, its sister sanctuary in Vietnam, Dao Tien, does. So the team do have a lot of experience in caring for these Southeast Asian primates. Alison wants to make sure Buddy, as he's known at the moment, has plenty of food for the journey home. Okay. Baby foods, full-fat milk, a pot to mix it in. But I also bought one dragon fruit, also good Loris food, so a few small pieces of dragon fruit. Alison wants to yeah. keep things as normal as possible for Buddy until he arrives back in the UK, so isn't making too many changes to his diet just yet. To get him from his cage into the travel crate, Alison enlists the help of a policeman. We can try and get him on a branch. Hey, you. Come on. This isn't going to be easy. Buddy seems reluctant to move. Come, baby. Yeah, I don't know that he will like that. Unusually for a mammal, a loris has a toxic bite to ward off predators. So Alison is being particularly cautious. Should I just grab him? Uh, come, come, come. Yeah, there, he's trying to bite me. A little gentle persuasion is going to be necessary. You undo his hands from the other side. Undo his hands quickly. Buddy is standing his ground. He is coming, I think. The one who is holding Okay. Last hands. He is friendly when you are just stroking. He's not used to being held, so. <laughs> I'm happy to see this day that it is going with a safe handling to a safe place. After people hearing about this slow loris, I'm sure that people will think not to smuggle like this. Alison is certainly hoping her trip will reinforce that message. And so the long journey back to Dorset begins. Alison and Buddy are causing quite a stir at the airport. 
She's doing final checks to make sure he's secure and has plenty of water before he's loaded onto the plane. The fact that he was biting me through the glove and I could feel it on my finger and on my thumb, I, I think he probably does have a good set of teeth in there, which is excellent news. It means that the people who caught him for the pet trade haven't broken off all of his teeth. So once again, another good sign that he's really fit and healthy and has a good future ahead of him. This is a big moment for Alison. It's taken months of negotiation and liaison with international governments and agencies to organize this rescue. Even airlines have gone the extra mile to help little Buddy. At the airport apron, the captain comes to check on his special cargo and welcome Buddy aboard. So that was just fantastic. That was the captain of the plane. He's really interested in the Loris. He's going to make sure everything goes really smoothly. Loris has just been loaded up into cargo hold five. It's going to have a nice heated area. And really, all it needs right now is to be quiet and left alone, because this is very scary. So a lot of noise, and uh, I think it's time for all of us to get on the plane and get going. It's about time to take off. Really happy. Start getting emotional now. It's fantastic. With Buddy safely in the cargo hold, Alison can finally relax. She's one step closer to getting the little Loris back to Dorset. Rescues are an important part of the work Monkey World does. But the rehabilitation afterwards is just as important. It's vital the animals learn to mix with others of their own kind. On the whole, all the groups of primates get on well. But it doesn't take much to tip the balance. One group that's had a lot of upheaval recently is Hernania's gang of chimps. First, second-in-command Tico looked like he was challenging Hanania for the leadership, which unsettled the group. Then, Cherry gave birth to twins, but sadly lost one, which was upsetting for them. However, things seem to have calmed down now, although some squabbling has left a few of the chimps with cuts and scrapes. Today, they've been given some hessian sacks to play with. And if they manage to get inside them, there'll be lots of treats in store. Meanwhile, Cherry's surviving twin, Thelma, is growing fast and is into everything. She started to explore the enclosure and is becoming more independent by the day. Cherry has risen to the challenge of motherhood and seems to be relishing the time with her baby daughter. She has a lot of help from Thelma's self-appointed aunts and uncles. Low-ranking Arthur adores Thelma and is always happy to give Cherry a break. While Shamak, ever the comedian, tries to entertain the youngster by turning upside down and generally acting the clown. Peggy is a good friend to Cherry, so while Shamak plays with Thelma, she pops over to keep her company. Babies are important in chimp society, and Thelma is definitely proving to be a great tonic for the group. It's the early hours of the morning, and the plane carrying Alison and Buddy the Loris from the Maldives has finally touched down in London. Alison is anxious to make sure Buddy has coped with the flight. Mind your step. Can I just have one look while you're holding it up? Hey, little man. Yeah, he's looking right around. He's looking really good. Can't be happier. He's alert. He's looking up. He was moving around, checking it out. He has the fresh air on his face. He looks fantastic, so he's made the journey really well. And he's changed position too, so I don't know whether that just happened now, but he might have been moving around in the night. As with all arrivals, Buddy has to go through the animal reception center to make sure all his paperwork is in order. There, it's decided his traveling crate has to be put into an extra box to comply with quarantine regulations. Great. 
box in a box. Yeah. While Alison has been away, the team at Monkey World have prepared a special quarantine room for Buddy, where he'll spend the next four months. And to make him feel at home, they've put lots of tasty grubs in there. Hey, you. Are you pretending you're asleep, little man? Loris are nocturnal, but Buddy's body clock may well be out of sync with all the traveling. It's going to just take him a little time to relax, and that, that's just fine. No problem whatsoever. We know he's OK in there, um, and he can walk out in his own time, hopefully find his way up through the branches. But I think if we clear out of here and turn the light off, there's a chance he might come out, especially hearing all of the crickets and locusts that are back in the corner. That might also sort of stir him up and make him want to come out and check things out. For right now, time for him to relax. After a gruelling journey, Buddy is finally left alone. But the team put the infrared cameras on when they leave, so they can see whether he comes to life once the lights go out. And lo and behold, when he's sure no one's around, he does start to explore. Buddy, if indeed he does turn out to be a he, and not a she as Alison suspects, has been lucky. He has a new life to look forward to with a new partner. But many other primates like him aren't so fortunate. They're caught up in the pet trade all over the world, which is why the CITES Treaty, which protects wildlife, is so important. Next time on Monkey Life. The team have a tough decision to make about Bart's mum, Chimp Susie. This morning's the day, and, and it's just terribly hard to, to face up to. And round-the-clock care for baby Boo Loo. <laughs>